This is mini lecture 5b and we are covering chapter 20, Physical Assessment. This is a great chapter, but it really does include a lot of very detailed information. You may want to practice some of these procedures with a friend or family member to get a better feel for how it's done. We'll start with the History and Physical, or H&P. When you come into a healthcare setting, it's very important for the healthcare providers, whether that's doctor, nurse, nurse practitioner, um, dietitian, that they, they gather the information they need in order to take care of the patient. So this is the History and Physical, and includes all of the different data points that you see here and here. Okay, you're gathering information. Part of that information that's gathered is something called a variance from normal. This is especially useful when you are familiar with a patient um, because you can discriminate normal from abnormal. You may note a change in mental status, you may notice a change in hygiene or appearance. This is very important because it could indicate a problem with an individual's health, a problem with an individual's social supports. All of this is important to report to your supervisor. When you look at a patient, you're looking at the patient as a whole and your overall impression is important. The things that you may want to observe are things like posture, body proportion, skin color, odors, character of speech. We'll talk about vital signs, height and weight, level of consciousness. I really like this part of assessment, gathering the data. It's a little bit like being a detective, but you are being a detective so you can take care of your patient. You're also going to make so psychosocial observations. This is part of the survey. So things like emotional status, mental status, appearance. True or false, a critical function of the healthcare worker is to be able to discriminate between normal and abnormal conditions and situations. Absolutely, that is true. Physical assessment um, is another skill required of a healthcare provider. And here are a couple of different terms that you can become familiar with. Inspection, we kind of know what that is. Auscultation, palpation, and percussion. So be sure to look up those terms. We also assess systems. And here we see the uh, primary systems of the body. And assessing systems, we look at eyes, ears, the nervous system, the endocrine, female reproductive, male reproductive. Which of the following is using the senses of vision, hearing, and smell for observation? This is an easy one, right? It's got to be inspection. Auscultation is using your stethoscope to listen. And palpation is using hands and fingers on the body to detect abnormalities. Part of gathering information has to do with a pain evaluation. We often use the 0 to 10 pain rating scale. And here you see it illustrated. If 10 is the most severe pain imaginable and zero is no pain, how would you rate your pain? We may ask a patient to compare the levels of pain before and after they take medications for pain. We may also note nonverbal cues, which tell us a, a lot, right? We learn that in communication. Part of gathering data also has to do with understanding whether a patient is able to perform what are called ADLs, activities of daily living. Things like bathing, eating, and shopping. Because if they cannot, they may need some assistance, they may need some therapy. 
but they certainly need consideration before we send them home um, if we want them to be safe. Now we're going to talk a little bit about vital signs. I will tell you it's great if you can practice taking vital signs. We'll start with temperature. We'll talk about um, what it shows us. On your exam, it is important for you to know the normal adult ranges for all of the vital signs. Okay, so we talk about afebrile and febrile. Um, an intermittent fever is one that comes and goes. A continuous fever, of course, stays. Night sweats can be part of a fever. And remember, fever is a defense mechanism against pathogens. You don't want to uh, treat a low-grade fever, but a fever can become dangerous if it becomes too high. There are different types of thermometers, which are listed here. Which of the following would be an ADL? It is laundry, just the basics. We will talk about um, taking pulses. Um, and actually, uh, there are many, many different pulse points. When you do measure a pulse, you're noting both the rate and the rhythm. The rhythm can be regular or irregular. You also may notice the, the pulse volume as well. Tachycardia is a very rapid pulse. Pulse rates do vary with age. Respiration is also one of the vital signs, and this is the process of moving air through the lungs. We inhale, breathe in, and exhale, breathe out, and that counts as one respiration. Know the terms associated with respiration, upnea, tachnea, um, bradyapnea. Uh, these are important to understanding uh, medical terminology. When you count respirations, you want the patient to be unaware that you're counting respirations, so you'll usually do this while you're taking the pulse um, or right after you take the pulse. Again, lots of terms. Make sure you look through what is apnea. Respiratory effort is important to note, and respiratory rates do vary with age. What is tachycardia? It is a high heart rate. Tachypnea is a high respiratory rate. Bradycardia is a low heart rate. Blood pressure is a very important and often used vital sign. So know what these different terms around blood pressure mean. Systolic, diastolic, hypo, low blood pressure, hyper, high blood pressure, sphygmomanometer, blood pressure cuff. Blood pressure can be high and without any symptoms, and that's why we call it a silent killer, because it does do a lot of damage, and you see some of the effects of high blood pressure here. The white coat syndrome means that you get a little nervous in the doctor's office and your blood pressure goes high, but at home it seems to be fine. Orthostatic or postural hypotension is when people are laying down and get up and their blood pressure drops. So they may feel a little dizzy and it could increase your risk for fall. So it's important to get up slowly. Blood pressure varies with age. Okay, and there are situations where you would not take a blood pressure from an arm and you need to check on those. Or the static hypotension is a rapid rise in blood pressure. Look at this, hypotension. So it's actually when the pressure falls. Height and weight is also important. Um, it's usually stable after adulthood. The height, or the height is, height can drop with osteoporosis, so height is monitored for older patients. Uh, many factors affect weight. There are different types of scales, 
familiarize yourself with those. And BMI, not perfect by any means, but we do use it in healthcare. Since it relies on weight, one of the problems is that people who are muscular or large boned have a higher BMI, but this does not mean that they have a higher health risk.